All right. Besides looking at charts for the last, uh, I haven't been looking at charts for the last few weeks. And starting the second week of May, these are some of the views that I've been participating in. And this is truly remarkable. This is the best image, the best sceneries that I've seen in my life. Just a combination of the sky, the mountains, the water, the waterfalls. It's just amazing. And coming back gives you fresh perspective of what life means and what we are supposed to do here. This was a very good spiritual journey and something that was much needed to enhance my uh, charting experience. But here are the, here's the weekly profile that I participated in after about two weeks or so, being away from the chart. So going to the objectives, market profile, buy or sell program. So clearly we're in a buy program, right? We took out external range liquidity here. And this is the week that I came in and saw, right? This is the week closure last week. And this is the closure of this week. So how I participated in this market. So we're in a buy program took out external range liquidity, we should expect some type of a pullback into internal range liquidity. So uh, weekly profile, weekly profile for this week was um, was a classic uh, Monday and Tuesday high of the week, followed by a um, TGIF Friday. So classic sell week, followed by TGIF Friday, and then um, relevant uh, uh, weekly profile news. We should see that news was on Thursday. There was a Thursday news at 8:30 high impact news. I only look at 8:30 high impact news. I don't look at the Tuesday 10 o'clock news here. Although uh, CB consumer con confidence did affect the market on on Tuesday, so sort of not really. I mean the push was push came before way before the uh, news, so that news was not really affected. So I only look at the 8:30 news here as far as the market is concerned. So after that, we'll talk about the H4PY and how I take those trades. So I, when I saw this week closure, why did I buy a put option? So when I saw this week close on Friday, I ended up buying a put option on Friday of last week. Right, I saw this around 1, 2 o'clock and I bought a put option here at the closure of that week. The reason I did that was because we had external range liquidity here. This is the previous week high, right? And that liquidity was taken. We had to shift the market structure on Thursday, right? We shift the market structure. We had changes to the delivery, shift the market structure here, right, on Thursday. And then Friday, we started moving up. And we did move up to about 50% of that range. And that's why I was I elected to buy that put option. I'll talk about two mistakes that I'd made uh, buying that put option. So that, that was the reason that I bought the put option on Friday. And the reason I did that is because we had a bullish closure here. We took external range liquidity. And then the, after that week, last week, we closed uh, inside of this week. So we worked through it, we closed as doji, closing inside of this bullish candle. So that it indicated to me at least that we should see a push down this week's low that this week's low and maybe the best case scenario will come down into this week's low right into this fair value gap weekly fair value gap this was the best case scenario I did not expect this I expect uh, at least a push below here that's why I elected to buy that put option on Friday now if you look at a four hour chart here like I said, we had a change in market structure. We went up into the dis into the premium area, and then we kind of sold off, right? So the SMT was here with Nasdaq. If you look at Nasdaq, this was the SMT here that indicated to me further that the market was going to be pushing down. And then uh, two mistakes that I made was let's bring out the uh, option contract that I bought. So here's the option contract that I bought for 29th of May. Uh, there's two mistakes. I want to talk about the mistakes that I, I did this week. The first mistake was that I bought the wrong option contract, 29th of May, which is uh, which is when is the expiration, right? So if it's going to be truly a bearish week, right, you want to hold it until Thursday. 
because TGI Friday will push prices higher. So since I was bearish, I put a I should have bought a put option for expiring on Friday, May 31st, but instead I bought a put option for the 29th. So I had to close out. That's uh, that's um, mistake number one. Mistake number two was the fact that I did not realize Monday was a Memorial Day weekend, so it's, it's a holiday. So I bought the contract on Friday thinking that Monday and Tuesday we should have some type of a volatility. Now, volatility came didn't came until Wednesday. So in retrospect, I should have waited at least till Monday to buy the option contract for put option. So those are the two mistakes that I bought. But I wanted to highlight here that the option contract was, um, it went as, as high as 800%, so 650% return. I think on Tuesday, I thought the option contract was at lowest, I think it was 0.7, so $7 or $8, up to about $10 per contract here on Tuesday at this push higher, and then it flushed. It, it went as high as $0.54 cents or $0.56, cents, so uh, $56, so about, let's say about 9 to $10 to about $56, right? So that's uh, that was the profit. Now, obviously, I didn't make this ton of money because I bought it on Friday. So the option um, uh, decay played a role in it. And obviously, the fact that I could not hold it until the full range on Wednesday. So I had to close out by the AM session on Wednesday because the option contract would expire. So those are the two mistakes that I bought. Nonetheless, I, I was happy that I bought the contract um, because of the candle closure, right? So if this was any other week, if this type of candle closure, one, two, three, uh, would put us in a profit below this, at least the previous week's load. So that was the uh, idea behind buying that contract. The next I wanted to talk about is the next day model. So we talked about the target. We talked about the accumulation manipulation, right? On four hour chart, the accumulation and the manipulation was the fact that it went up. This was the manipulation here. SMT went up, accumulated, uh, or accumulation here, manipulation above this high, right? And then followed by market structure shift. So accumulation here, again, accumulation here, right? Anything above this is manipulation, right? So let's get rid of this. Anything above that is manipulation here. So followed by a shift here. Now I wanted to talk about the next day model as well, that I, the trade that I took with ES. So if you look at ES, I took a trade based on one hour model here. So I took two trades. I took a trade on uh, Wednesday, but the one trade that I took on Thursday was a more um, promising trade here. So let's talk about that. So same thing on Wednesday, on a weekly profile, we can see that we took out extra range liquidity. We should have a push below this um, push below this previous week's low here into this fair valley gap. So that was the premise behind the NQ trade. Now this was trade was on paper trading. And the reason I took this trade on uh, this day, uh, I didn't have a, I didn't have a, I wanted to talk about this trade on Thursday that I took that I was very proud of. So basically I saw that we come into this fair value gap on, on, on Thursday. And once we come into that fair value gap, once we come into the fair value gap, I waited for a market structure shift on 15 minute to five minute chart. So if you look at Thursday, so this is the Thursday price action. This is the one hour fair value gap there. So I entered a trade for, for on a five minute chart, right? So this is a Thursday price action. Price comes empty here, kind of stalls here. We break down. Right? We break down, but we haven't broken, we haven't caused a change in state of delivery here, right? So this is the candle that went up into here, even this candle, right? These order blocks here. So we haven't broken that order block here until 9.30. So 9.30, we break that change in state of delivery, change in market structure here, and I enter off of this trade. Right there was my entry. And what I made a mistake on was the fact that Yes, you, I, I entered off a five minute chart, but I should have waited until 9.45, closer to 10 o'clock. Because if you look at it on a 15 minute chart, we, we, 
we didn't really break market structure under closure of the 930 candle so I should have waited at least until 945 to enter the trade but nonetheless on five minute chart we have a market structure shift and a break and that's why I elected to um, take a trade from here the best trade was here where it comes into the fair value gap into this order block here and then we start flushing and then we take I take profit partial profits all throughout here so that was the trade that I was most proud of and what I did here was that I saw the same thing on 15 minute chart on 15 minute chart we come up to a area of fair value right we come up to an area of fair value here here we kind of consolidate and then we break structure again so uh, since since we had a push down on on Tuesday right we come up consolidate and then down I didn't get a good entry I didn't get a good entry on on Tuesday Tuesday I had that option contract going so I was more focused on that option and trying to see what I can do on Tuesday in taking profit for that option so this was not a great trade I did not see a clarity there after the um, consolidation there so after the consolidation right in the in the p.m. session we had a market structure shift and then I elected to go here Right, the ideal trade would have been to get up here and then close below these lows here. But I was not proud of this trade, but I was proud of taking seeing this and taking the trade accordingly. The only other concern that I would I would put in this one is the fact that I wish I should have waited for a 50 minute chart uh, to close below those um, uh, changes to their delivery there. And if you look at this, the trade came. So if you look at this on a four hour chart, right, we have we have a uh, Thursday coming up to this in this uh, fair value gap as well. So the reason I should have waited for that 15 minute closure was because we were in a four hour four hour um, market structure here. So I should have waited for a time frame alignment of 15 minutes, at least a 15 minute chart to have a change in state of delivery, change in state of um, market structure for in order for me to enter that trade.